This is Sports Jam. I'm Doug Doyle. The Rutgers Scarlet Knights basketball season came to a crashing halt in the first round of the NIT tournament, but Rutgers star center Cliff Omori is still one of the greatest stories in college basketball today. And joining us is the 6'11 junior dunking phenom, number 11, Cliff Omori. Cliff, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me. Pleased to have you aboard. We're also joined by a very important person in Cliff Omori's life, his guardian, Muhammad Oliver, who helped Cliff grow his love for not only basketball, but life in general through the Salvation Army Newark Westside Basketball Program after Cliff immigrated from Nigeria at the age of 14. Muhammad, great to have you on Sports Gen. Thanks for having me. Great to be here. So, Cliff, let's get this out of the way because I want to get to your amazing story, but your thoughts on the season-ending loss to Hofstra in overtime in the NIT opening round, I'm, I'm sure that was real disappointing for you. Uh, yeah, it, was, it really was disappointing because that wasn't the way like, I wanted to go as a team. Like I just missed really playing with my brothers and my friends, so this was really an unfortunate end. You really had an amazing junior season. We'll talk about your career in a moment. But, Mohammed, those first few days when Cliff arrived at the airport in America and how quickly he wanted to go to the park and play with you, can you take us back to the relationship with his brother Fred and you having a mutual friend and how things got rolling and how Cliff became a part of your family? Well, it all basically started with um, me. I used to help kids come to America. I would kind of vet the, the families that they would be going with um, in that process. A friend of mine named Eric uh, introduced me to Alfred, and um, Cliff's situation was was one of a little unique. He wasn't really a basketball player; he was more of a, a, a academic student who truly was coming for academics. So, because of that sheer point of his story, uh, Alfred and I began speaking on a, a consistent basis, and um, through that, through the communication, we developed the bond and. Um, Next thing I know, uh, I was agreeing to let Cliff come to my house instead of finding him a family. And you know what's wonderful about that, and I'm sure people have told you this many times, Muhammad, is that you have your own family that you had before Cliff arrived, and you had a lot of kids. And so you just made this commitment to this young man, and boy, just to see him grow into this wonderful person, not just a great basketball player, but a wonderful person, it has to be so satisfying for you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I, although I'm getting a lot of the credit, I would have to say my wife is the one who made the real decision for him to come. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been a joy just watching him grow, watching him uh, achieve the small goals that we set step by step. It's definitely been a, a joy for me and my family. Cliff, let's look back a little bit before we look forward and take us to the day that you met Muhammad. And you saw all these big skyscrapers in New York City and that. What was that like for you? It had to be just such an experience. Uh, it was a great experience just coming out of uh, uh, at the airport, meeting him, um, getting to eat like a uh, McDonald's fast food, seeing the buildings, uh, getting to meet his family. It was like a great experience. You had McDonald's right away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Muhammad, we, we could have found him a better first meal, right? <laughs> well, 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 you know, you're you're a sports guy. I, I got him in McDonald's because I wanted him to be a McDonald's All-American. So I, I wanted him to understand that the highest level of high school basketball was you taking this picture with your Big Mac saying that I'm a McDonald's guy. You know what I mean? You knew it right away, didn't you? Now, you had also said, Muhammad, I know in, in past interviews that you knew he was athletic, but it really was the fact that he was wanted and committed to be a great student and, and to and to be, you know, growing his education. That's what made the difference. This wasn't Muhammad saying, hey, this guy's going to be a basketball star. That, that was not even in the cards at first, was it? No, nah, I mean, if I'm being honest, you know, basketball is something that you have to really love, learn and, and, and work hard at. So, you know. It's a reason why only 1% of the people become pros because it takes that dedication. But um, seeing his academic dedication gave me a glimpse of what his work ethic would be like. And I, I knew that I was going to be willing to work with him. So I felt like that would be a, a match made in heaven. 
you just started playing basketball really at the age of 12, I understand. You always seem to love to dunk the basketball, and you've become one of the best dunkers in the country, not just in college, <laughs> but, you know, where did this love to, to jump up in the air and then slam the ball down? You know, take us take us through that a little bit. Uh, in middle school in Nigeria, I was, like, into, like, high jump and long jump. So, like, that was, like, this sport I played in middle school in Nigeria. So, like, the athleticism just, like, came from there, jumping and so. You know, if anybody had any thoughts that your game can't transfer to the NBA, all you have to do is look at what you did against Purdue and how you shut down one of the top centers in America and also posted him. If anybody wants to see a great YouTube video, you check mm -hmm. out Cliff Maury posting against Purdue and you'll see something that will make your jaw drop. Oh, oh my goodness! Posterized! Eating. Cliff Amore. He saw Ron Harper Jr. Wow. A little bit of reference. What a pass by McConnell. And finish by the big fella. Ugh. How satisfying was that first victory over Purdue this year? I know you beat them last year as well, but when they were top seed, and now they're still a top seed in the NCAA basketball tournament. How satisfying was that victory and, and basically keeping him in check? It was satisfying. Like, uh, to, uh, me and my teammate, we just had, like, the, the uh, what was it called? I don't know, like, the energy, the focus, like, to just go to their place and win there. Like, we all played together. We got our energy, you know, that they're the number one thing. Let's go take it from there by their place. So, like, just going against him, it was, like, just a great experience. Uh, putting him in the early foul trouble. That was just one of my goals. And I have my teammates just like keep feeding me the ball to make sure I get in foul trouble. You know what's a real sign that you're a good person? When your teammates speak so highly of you, not just with your play, but you can tell the respect that they have for Cliff Amori. Did it take a while to get that, that rapport with the Rutgers team? I know that at Roselle Catholic, you know, you had transferred there and um, and Dave Both took you in as coach and, and showed you more skills. But eventually, you know, with coach there at Rutgers and how he uh, was able to work with you, was it an easy transition being highly recruited and wanting to stay home? And then all of a sudden you have the opportunity to be with some uh, wonderful coaches like Steve Peichel, who knew, I think, right away that you were going to be a stud. Tell us about the transition from Roselle Catholic to Rutgers. Well, it really was in that like, great transition because, like, uh, in Roselle, you get to play against the top players in the nation. So, like, just going to Rutgers and playing against, like, being in the tough, like, league, like the Big Ten, playing against the tough, like, big men, it was just, like, uh, me going from one step to another, going to another level. So, like, that was how it felt. Muhammad, one thing also that uh, is part of Cliff's story is learning at an early age to give back. And he has given back to the Salvation Army Newark Westside Basketball Program. Tell us a little bit more about the program, if you would, Muhammad, and how Cliff has been able to give back. So the program, the program is uh, an in-house league and a travel program. We start from six years old all the way up to senior high school, 17, 18 year old. Um, this is the first year that we are having all teams active for the spring and summer session to compete uh, regional and locally. Um, as far as how Cliff has helped give back, he's um, he's been able to take what would normally be just a situation of basketball into a gym to making it into a, um, a total training environment as well. So um, part of Cliff's journey was not only spent here at the West Side, but, you know, for the things we didn't have, we had to go other places. You know, strength and conditioning, to use Vertimaxes, to use shooting guns. What Cliff provided here is he, he actually got that equipment for us here so these kids now can have a one-stop shop for training, practice, and just growing and developing, developing their basketball game. Cliff, who taught you to give back? Um, <laughs> I said one is being a Christian, and two is just like they gave me a lot when I came to the America, so I just like want to give them that. 
I'm like the Bible say, give and it shall be given out to you. So that's just like one of my one of my favorite verse in the Bible. So I hear the lot, so I give a lot. Thanks to technology, you've been able to stay close with your family and close contact with them all the time. Yeah. But I know in 2020, senior night at Roselle Catholic, and of course, Muhammad Oliver was right there with you. There was a special guest that was waiting for you <laughs> on senior day. Can you talk about, you know, seeing your brother there on the court and what it meant to you? Uh, it really meant a lot of just seeing my brother, like, I felt like four years, because the last time I saw him was the month, uh, two, three months before I left for America. So, like, getting to see him was just, like, a great experience. And kind of, like, shed a lot of tears during that city on night. And I know you haven't in person been able to see your mom, but she certainly is following your wonderful career. And tell us a little bit about mom. You know, what what is what has that relationship grown? Because unfortunately, you know, it can't be in person, but you can still feel the love that uh, that you give on that technology when you're on the screen with her. Tell us a little bit about mom. Uh, yeah, I feel the love like every time I get to talk to her on the call, like seeing her every time and being able to share with her, my older siblings and stuff on Facebook call is really like a fun thing and I appreciate technology for that. You lost your dad during the whole journey uh, after you had come to America, so I'm, I'm sure that was difficult for you. But somehow I would imagine as you have success, dad's looking down at you saying, Wow, Cliff, you have come a long way. What do you think about that? Uh, I think he's going to be proud of me. Like, from where I was uh, now, he's going to be really proud of me. Like, I know he's looking down on me, and he's happy to see what, I, what I've become, and yeah, I'm going to. Mohammed, how's been the uh, relationship with your kids and Cliff? With my kids and Cliff, you you can't even really tell a difference. You would think you would think that my wife had Cliff and the kids. My my younger ones, they, they you can't tell them that Cliff isn't their brother. <laughs> like you know, the older ones, the relationship is great. You know, Cliff is Cliff is such a good kid. You know, my 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 oldest son is in high school. Somehow, some way, with Cliff's busy schedule, he's made it to come support him at high school games this year. You know, uh, even my youngest son. So for me this year, I had uh, a son in middle school playing basketball, son in high school, and then Cliff in college. So my schedule was crazy, but Cliff still made it with his big schedule to see my boys play. And um, every time he came, they, they performed for him. <laughs> they definitely, it's, it's like big bro in the building. I got to do what I have to do. And I know your son, Cliff, it's so proud to know that there could be a next level for Cliff Amore's career. Now, a junior, but the NBA lurks in the future, doesn't it, Cliff? Yeah, that was one of the good plans of being there. <laughs> so what do you think? You, are, you're you definitely staying for your senior year at Rutgers? Uh, we don't know yet, but it's our best plan. So, like, it's going to see where it comes. You know, what's wonderful is the fact that you stayed home, right? You stayed close to home. You stayed in New Jersey, and you helped Steve Peichel and the rest of your teammates, you know, build something really special at Rutgers. Even though this season ended in disappointment, you've had some huge wins, and really the respect of Rutgers basketball has grown. So tell us about making that decision. You know, you could have went to a lot of other colleges, but you decided Rutgers was the place. Was Muhammad involved in that with you? Um, it's pretty much like everybody, like just like viewing from different perspectives. Like, uh, Rutgers was actually the first like college I believed in in my uh, sophomore year when I was like after I came back from my injury, they still believed in me and stuff. Um, like just get, building connection with the coaching staff, the nights, and uh, so the spike or just building connection with them and get go, get into like see them go from where they was my freshman year to like my senior year in high school and also like going to a couple of games and seeing how the fans were supportive of the team that kind of like uh, play a usual Rutgers head coach Steve Peichel has seen you grow so much not only as a, as a as for strength wise and you've always been able to leap so that wasn't the issue but You've now become a leader on this team, not only on the defensive side, but a rebounder. And you have doubled your points but from your freshman year. 
So it's it's been a, a learning process. What do you want to talk about, Coach Pikel, and how he's helped your game? Uh, he's really just like lived with me, like work with me, and just like um, just watching film with him, just telling me like stuff I did doing and stuff I could get better, and just like keep me like keep pushing me to be good, to be great. You get an opportunity to go back and visit mom in Nigeria and, and your family. What would that mean to you? That would mean a lot to me. Like getting yeah, to see my mom now and my nephew and nieces back home. That would mean a lot to me. Wouldn't it be something if there's an NBA game in Nigeria? That would be a perfect ending for Cliff Amori, <laughs> wouldn't it? That would be great because I would get all my tickets to be to my family. <laughs> You might miss the game because you'd be more <laughs> more interested in talking to your family and hanging out with them, and and suddenly you miss tip off. I think they would even understand that, Cliff. Yeah, they were they were that because they would want me to play. They would want to come watch me instead of me talking to them. They would want to see me play. So a lot of people want to see you play because you're one of the most exciting college basketball players out there. Gillis. good pass, McConnell on the finish for morning. When you watch him play, Muhammad. What what are you thinking about? Are you thinking about that fourteen year old who you met, or or are you thinking about his incredible journey? Man, if I'm being honest, sometimes it's different things go through my head. You know, if if I see him do something that I saw him do early, I'm I'm happy that he finally did it in the game. Um, when when he's successful, I'm even more happy. I, I think about where he started. If he's having a bad day, I'm still happy because I think about where he's at versus where he started. So for the most part, I'm just, you know, to me, just watching him play is, is just such a joy. It's, it's like um, like anything that you, you've you been hands-on with and you see it mature and develop is just excitement most of the time. Cliff, you went from a 180-pounder to a 240-pounder with hard work. I mean, it just, you know, that that's work. But when it came to to your regiment, now are you at exactly where you want to be at, at a playing weight that for the transferring to the NBA that you feel that you can go up against the big bodies, or is there going to be more pounds put on that incredible leaping figure? No, uh, I think there's going to be more pounds, like more so wise, and yeah, I think I'm gonna get like maybe ten to fifteen pounds more to myself. Do you have a favorite NBA team to watch and, and root for, or are you just a uh, just a basketball fan in general? I'm just a basketball fan in general. At first, I used to root for the Lakers, but like due to a lot of like stuff, I just stopped watching like NBA basketball because like some of the rules like kind of crazy. So I just stick to uh, college because uh, NBA rules and college rules are kind of like different. <laughs> I bet, you, I bet you the Lakers are saying right now, no, 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 that's okay. We're we're glad that you you were you know at first were a Lakers fan. Stay a Lakers fan because <laughs> everybody would like to have you on their team. You know, we just celebrated recently one of the greatest basketball players ever when we lost Bill Russell, who played for the Boston yeah. Celtics, and his game was defense, leadership, and the ability to win. You know, there's a little similarity between Cliff Omori and Bill Russell because you are so well liked by your teammates, right? So you are a leader. And if you stay for your senior year, you'll be even a bigger leader. You play defense and you impose your will with those dunks like Bill used to do going up against people like Will Chamberlain. Well, you went up against the Purdue Center and you uh, you showed him that you had no fear. So do you know anything about Bill Russell? Yeah, I, I had to buy the rings and stuff. I was some of, the, some of his allies, like some old school allies he had. Yeah, you'll definitely want to check out that documentary if you haven't had a mm -hmm. chance to see Bill Russell because he will inspire you to become even more uh, of a leader and, and a winner on top of what you've already done. We are speaking here on Sports Jam with Muhammad Oliver, who's just... <laughs> has been a big part of this incredible story of Cliff Omori. And, you know, as he gives credit to his wife for making uh, some decisions, how does your wife feel about Cliff now? Oh, she loves it. She loves it. She, My wife works for the state every time she goes into work. Everybody in the office is telling her how great Cliff's doing. 
uh, you know, her friends, everybody's into basketball 100% now. So she loves it. And um, I think she looks back at the journey, too. And she smiles a little bit more than I do. So she, every time we at the game, she's all smiles. Whether they win or lose, sometimes I have to tell her, hey, we just lost. Stop smiling. You know what I mean? But she she loves she loves everything that's going on. And she's happy for Cliff. Cliff, we started this interview by talking about how Muhammad Oliver knew that you were interested in studies. What has Rutgers taught you about education? And tell us a little bit about your major and and, and how you've uh, gone on the academic side. Uh, at first, I was going into like uh, what was it, uh, engineering, but due to my schedule, that's the way I kind of switched to uh, information technology since the world right now is going to all the technology aspects. So I just like figured that that would be like a great major for me. And when it comes to technology, I just like, love technology. So, I well, the only to... thing I think that's stopping you with technology is making sure you get your whole body on the screen, right? <laughs> 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 they, they, have, they have to figure that out right we want to see all of you <laughs> especially if you're going for an interview right for a job interview they're going to go wait a minute where is he at he's all over the place he's too tall but when did your growth spurt start as a kid uh, probably in middle school yeah it started in middle school my, what we call my older brother like, because I was sure there was always, like, knocking my head, kind of. So my mom kept telling them, it's going to, like, I go, you guys. At least so you guys will, uh, will be unable to, like, knock him in the head. But a year later, I was, like, taller than them, but that just keep going. <laughs> and, and every time I, like, see I'm sick or, like, get a little cold or fever, I get taller. As we get ready to wrap up this edition of Sports Jam, technology enables us to see only a small part of Nigeria. You spent very good years there for you with your family. What don't we know about Nigeria that we should know? Like right now, I really don't know a lot about Nigeria right now because it's going to be so different. <laughs> it's been seven years since I've been up, so Nigeria, like, they're going, like, they're progressing, so, like, I don't know a lot right now, but all I know is that they just got a new president, and I think they're trying to better the country. Would you like someday, after the NBA career is over, to go back and and to share not only wealth and knowledge with that country, or is it someplace, is America for you right now? Uh, I believe, like, I want to, like, do both, like. That's a good answer. I would imagine, Mohammed, you you did a lot of research about Nigeria through the years, too, and, and what are your thoughts about finding somebody who has this uh, thirst for education and then what you do and how you mold these young men and in, you know into it's it's about basketball in some respects but it's so much more than that tell us about that well you know personally i believe in um life lessons through sports uh basketball is just a sport that i love you know what i mean so um like uh to to answer a little bit of what cliff just elaborated on i think the beautiful thing about him being in America for so long is he's basically like a dual citizen right now. So whether whether he knows it or not, once everything, you know, as they say from my mouth to God's ears, but if, if he's blessed with the opportunity to be a pro in the NBA, I think that's just going to open so many doors for back home in Nigeria and been in city. Like just having a guy like Cliff come from there it automatically comes with a responsibility to give back. And as we can already see, he's already that person. So I, I just foresee him and his family, you know, creating a foundation and, and being heavily involved with the development of um, education and, and sports and back home in Nigeria, just like he is here in, in Newark, New Jersey. Like there's no way he gives to Newark and doesn't go back home and does the same thing. So I just, you know, I see that in the future for him. And um, like I said, I just believe in sports, um, life, le life lessons through sports. So any kid that I can help and um, that's not going to be a problem to me and my family, I'm willing to, I'm willing to help him. Fantastic. Amora could score one point a game and he would still have a fabulous story, but that's not the case. He has turned into quite a star. One of the 10 finalists for the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar Award given to the nation's best center. And just so you know, Cliff, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar has been on Sports Jam twice 
So you're oh. in good company here as far as uh, being a guest here on Sports Jam. So before, before, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, his love of jazz. Do you have any love of music, Cliff, that you want to pass along to us? Uh, I'm just going to listen to Afrobeat sometimes. Uh, maybe some American hip-hop. Hip hop and Afro Afrobeat, yeah. So yeah. Well, we might have to send you a jazz package. We got to get you listening to, <laughs> to, to some jazz too, because Kareem is a huge jazz fan. If you ever get the chance to talk to him, that's a subject he would be able to talk for hours with you about his knowledge of jazz. Cliff, thanks for joining us on Sports Thank Jam. You Continued so much. success. Thank you. And for you, uh, Muhammad Wow, uh, congratulations on this amazing story and. You had your own family when you and your wife made this decision and you, you put the time and love into a young man who has really been much more than anyone might have anticipated coming out of Nigeria. Yeah, he had the athletic ability, but it's about the person that we admire so much. And when you talk to his teammates, you can hear the love, you can hear the love with his coach and you can hear the respect and love that you have. Congratulations, Muhammad, on just a, an outstanding, not only with the program there, but with what you've done with Cliff. Thank you so much. I truly appreciate that. We'll see you again on Sports Jam. Remember, you're always invited back, Cliff. Thank you so much. You too, Thank Muhammad. you for having us. Take care. Sports Jam is a WBGO Studios production. You can hear all the past shows by going to wbgo.org slash sports jam or wbgo.org slash studios. You can also hear Sports Jam with Doug Doyle by going to the NPR list of podcasts or wherever you hear podcasts. Until our next Sports Jam session, I'll see you at the game.